If you're hearing boss music in your head right now, that's normal. Come Wednesday, May 22nd on Pokemon TCG Live, these 60 hit point basics become mostly unplayable. That's the bad news. The good news is that 70 hit point versions of them exist. Yeah, they might have a higher retreat cost or a worse attack, but the alternative is losing. The culprit for this massacre is Dragapult EX. Since it can put 6 damage counters on your bench Pokemon, any 60 hit point basic is easy pickings, either for a quick KO or a late de-evolution. What this means is that when Twilight Master Raid hits live, your old deck lists are going to have to undergo some changes. For some, it's simply swapping out the 60 HP basic for the 70 hit point one. For others, you'll want to utilize a new A spec or a new attacker. Now what about Rabska? In theory, it's perfect. Manaphy and Jirachi are useless against Dragapult, but Rabska blocks all effects of attacks done to your bench Pokemon, including those pesky damage counters. We'll dive a little deeper and you'll see why Dragapult is so scary. If you only have a 1-1 Rabska, you have to get it up and running right away, otherwise they just KO your 50 hit point Relor. Okay, so how about a 2-2 line? Sure, except now you have to basically TM Evolution both into play as soon as possible. Otherwise, they'll just knock out your only one by gusting it into the active, and you're stuck wasting all your resources to get another one going. So yes, Rabska is your best counter to Dragapult, but they can also play around it very easily. With all that fun stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the top decks with Twilight Master Raid. Joe from Omnipoke tabulated results from Japanese tournaments based on top 8 finishes and League Cup Championship points per placement. Dragapult dominating is no surprise, but Lugia appears to be the best old deck in the new format. Then in A tier, it's Giratina Lost Zone, Charizard EX, Maridon EX, and Lost Box, with Gardevoir and Chen Pao right behind. Joe did note that combining the single and multi-prize Ancient Box list into one would place it in B tier, just behind Future Hands. Kicking the deep dive off with Ludia V-Star, the Minchino from Temporal Forces survives the damage counters, Sinchino can one-shot Dragapult, and Mist Energy protects against those damage counters. So in terms of Pokemon, the main changes you want to make are swapping out the 60 hit point Minchino for the 70 hit point one, then adding in a single copy of the new Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX. This card is awesome. A 260 hit point basic, it does 240 damage for 5 energy. But for each prize card your opponent takes, the attack costs one less energy. If they've taken five prizes, it's doing that 240 damage for free. Then we come to the best new A spec for Ludia, Legacy Energy. When it's attached to a Pokemon, it provides every type of energy, but only one at a time. And if the Pokemon it's attached to is knocked out, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. The prize card denial is great, but Legacy Energy also opens up the ability to attack with Pokemon like Iron Hands EX, Radiant Charizard, Luminion V, and even the Water Ogre Pawn EX. Iron Hands EX can take two prizes against weaker Pokemon, while Luminion V is shuffled back into the deck with its attack, removing a two-prizer from the field. The Water Ogre Pawn isn't as highly played, but it does give Ludia a spread attacker at the cost of sending three energy back into your deck. As I've warned previously, shuffling energy back into the deck with Lugia is risky because then they'll just target your Archeops. Finally, the last card you'll want to add to Lugia V-Star is Carmine. How many is up to you? Japanese lists run anywhere from 0 to 4. Playable on the first turn of the game, even if you go first, Carmine is a discard and draw 5. Obviously this could screw you over getting rid of all your special energy, but the risk is worth it. Lugia almost always wants to go first, and Carmine allows you to dig deeper into your deck, hopefully finding that Lugia V. Ultimately, this is what you'll want your Lugia V star deck to look like come Twilight Master Raid. Again, the Carmine count is up to personal preference, but so long as you chuck in the 70 hit point Mancino, a Blood Moon or Saluna, and a Legacy Energy, you're good to go. The only thing I'll add is that if Iron Thorns EX does end up being popular, it's not looking like it, you will need to include a copy of Fluttermane. Otherwise, you just lose the game because you'll never be able to use Ludia's Summoning Star to put Archeops into play. I'll admit that I thought Gardevoir EX would be done with this format. Not because of Dragapult, which does kind of suck for it, but because of Jamming Tower, which shuts off the effects of all Pokemon tool cards. Gardevoir relies so heavily on tools and over-damaging their Pokemon that shutting off those tools seemed insurmountable. But the good news is that people actually have to play Jamming Tower for it to be a problem. And if they don't, Gardevoir continues to be a good deck with a couple new cards. The first most immediate change is the 70 hit point Ralts, no surprise there. Get the memory skip one out of there and replace it with the teleportation burst one. It survives Dragapult pings and can also send itself back to the bench in a pinch. 
Then we come to the two new cards, Monkey Dory and Unfair Stamp. Yes, Gardevoir will be monkeying around with Twilight Masquerade. Manually attach a Darkness Energy to Monkey Dory, now you can move up to three damage counters from one of your Pokémon to one of your opponent's Pokémon. It might seem insignificant, but if you're a math whiz like I am, you see how synergistic it is with Drifloon. Currently, a Drifloon with a Bravery Charm maxes out at 300 damage. But with Monkey Dory math, you can put up to 110 damage on Drifloon, buffing it to 330 damage, perfect for one-shotting Dragapult EX and Charizard EX. Thanks to Monkey Dory boosting Drifloon, you no longer need to rely on Hero's Cape as your ace spec. Bravery Charm and Luxurious Cape are enough to get you there. This opens up the door for a new ace spec, Unfair Stamp. Yeah, you could make the case for Hyper Aroma, which gets you any three Stage 1 Pokémon from your deck. For Gardevoir, it's just three Curlia, but Unfair Stamp is better, especially since you already run TM Evolution. With Unfair Stamp, if they knock out one of your extremely weak Pokémon, you put them down to two cards in hand while you get five. And since it's an item, you can still use a supporter on your turn. If you don't understand how crazy Unfair Stamp is, you will very soon. Here's the Gardevoir EX list you'll want to use with Twilight Masquerade. Aside from the Monkey Dory, Unfair Stamp, 70 hit point Ralts, and Darkness Energy, it's pretty much how you remember it. You will want to keep a copy of Fluttermane in the list at all times, otherwise you lose to Iron Thorns EX. And if your opponent's playing Jamming Tower, well, uh, good luck, I guess. Now what about Charizard EX? Like nearly all decks relying on evolutions, it has to make some changes. The 60 hit point Charmander is gone, replaced with the 70 hit point one. A case can be made for either, the 151 Charmander discards a stadium like Jamming Tower and can deal 30 damage for 2 energy, while the promo Charmander can deal 40 damage for 2 energy with the added drawback of having to discard an energy. Though if you're attacking with the Charmander it's probably not surviving anyway so the energy discard doesn't really matter. And honestly, Charmander is about the only real change you need to make with Charizard EX. Dragapult EX has overtaken Charizard as the best stage 2 deck in standard for many reasons, including the fact that it doesn't have an easily exploitable grass weakness. I mean, the new Diplin can absolutely destroy Charizard. But even though it's dropped a bit on the power scale, Charizard EX is still Charizard EX. Perusing various lists, the only other new card you'll almost definitely want to add is a copy of Kirin. The switch effect is whatever, it might help against the stall deck. What you're playing it for is the 30 damage boost to Pokemon V and EX. Now, Charizard can take a Dragapult or Charizard one-shot KO a turn earlier when they have two prize cards remaining. Elsewhere, some of the cards I've seen played in Japanese lists are TM Evolution for Easy Evolves, Saguaro to heal 50 damage from two Pokemon that Dragapult is setting up for a de-evolution, Radiant Zarina to heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon, and Unfair Stamp to try and stick them with two cards early. Alright, fine, I'll briefly talk about Snorlax Stall, because yes, it does get more annoying with Twilight Masquerade thanks to one card. No, it's not Handheld Fan, though that will make life more difficult, as hitting into a Snorlax now means they can send one of your energy back to a useless Pokemon like Babarel. No, it's a accompanying flute. So, you know how terrible it is when they Erica's Invitation a basic Pokemon from your hand into the active? Or when they Mantine a Pokemon from your discard pile onto the bench? At least in those two instances, you have some control over the effectiveness of them. With Accompanying Flute, you're at the mercy of RNG. Snorlax runs four flutes, the uh, flouts, and for each they look at the top five cards of your deck. Then they can put any number of basic Pokemon directly onto your bench. Yeah, kinda just a game-winning card in a lot of instances. Basically, their whole game plan with the Flute is to hit a non-threat like Rotom, Bidoof, Squawkabilly, Manaphy, Jirachi, Relor, or even Radiant Greninja. Then they counter-catcher it up, and you have to waste all of your resources trying to switch it out. Unless you're testing for a tournament, I recommend just conceding immediately against Snorlax on PDCGL. It'll be a lot more fun than spending 20 minutes clenching your cheeks hoping they don't hit anybody with the Flute. Which is so powerful of a card that they aren't even bothering to play Erica's Invitation or Mantine in most instances anymore. To beat off the Raging Dragon people kept in their pants, Japanese players started playing Maridon EX, and it worked so well, the deck finished first in the Champions League tournament. And it's not like it needed any major changes. Just add in a copy of Tatsugiri for supporter search, a couple of rescue board to retreat it, and you're good to go. The reason for Maridon's success comes from the fact that it can take a huge KO on turn 1 going 2nd. Thanks to the 10 damage boost from Zapdos, Maridon EX can deal 230 damage, perfect for one-shotting every basic not named Raging Bolt or Blood Moon Ursaluna. 
You also hit Ludia V-Star for weakness, and Iron Hand ZX can take two prizes on weak single prizers like Dreepy and Drucloak and Comfey. Maraidon EX is just a really solid deck going into Twilight Masquerade. The Maraidon fills up your bench and hits hard, Tatsugiri helps you find your supporters turn after turn, Iron Hands takes extra prizes, Electric Generator floods your side with energy, and Raichu V can take huge knockouts at the end of the game if there's a pesky Dragapult or Charizard. And what about the Lost Zone? Well, Giratina's still in a great place with Twilight Masquerade. Thanks to Star Requiem, you're all but guaranteed to take a one-shot on Dragapult EX at some point during the game. You just have to avoid their one copy of Mist Energy, which several Dragapult lists aren't even running anymore. And while Lost Impact comes up short of a KO on Dragapult, you can always clean it up later with Sableye's Lost Mind Pings. Or you can run Maximum Belt as your A spec, which gives Giratina one-shot power on Dragapult and Charizard. In terms of new cards, there's just one, Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX. You'll still want to lean on Cramorant early, but Ursa Luna gives you a powerful basic attacker at any point in the game. And with Mirage Date, Ursa Luna is a threat at any time you have 7 cards in the Lost Zone. Though you probably won't want to put 5 energy on this thing unless you know it'll survive. Then you can Lost Impact the energy away with Giratina afterwards. Here's one of the many first place Giratina lists from Japan. Everything's fairly typical, though this player opted for 1 Arvin and 2 Roxanne to help the early and late game plays. Basically, you just want to get your Lost Zone to 7 cards on turn 2 if possible, then start Mirage Gating and Lost Impacting. You could always swap out Maximum Belt for Unfair Stamp to try and stick them to 2 cards early, or run a copy of Artisan to help get out your non-rule box basics, but that's about it. Turning to the Lost Box deck, there's a familiar face, Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX. Again, this card is amazing, boasting 260 hit points and dealing 240 damage for as little as 0 energy. And with 7 switch cards in the deck, the secondary effect where you can't attack the following turn isn't a big deal. Aside from Ursa Luna, your staple attackers are going to be Cramorant, Sableye, Raikou, V, and Radiant Greninja. Cramorant has a high chance to attack turn 1 after 2 Comfey and a Colrus, Sableye spreads damage counters late, Raikou V can hit things like Lugia V-Star for weakness or just deal a big chunk of damage to everyone else, and Radiant Greninja punishes decks without a Mana Fear or Rabska in play. In terms of flex cards, there's Roaring Moon EX, which is always a good choice as it allows you to one-shot anything, though you do have to include Darkness Energy. The Splup Ditto is a great way to improve your chances of a turn 1 Comfey while also giving you an easy card to send to the Lost Zone later on in the game. And TMD Evolution allows you to deal with Stage 1 and 2 Pokemon EX if you come up short on a KO. Here's what Lost Box looks like with Twilight Masquerade. Prime Catcher is the ace of choice because it's awesome. Iron Bundle makes you wish Escape Rope was still in format, and the 3 Lost Vacuum help pump up your Lost Zone insanely fast while also removing any pesky HP boosters like Bravery, Charm, and Hero's Cape. Unfortunately, Chen Pao EX has fallen on some hard times. Not only is it no longer listed among the best decks in Japan, I looked at numerous lists and pretty much everything was the same, though a copy of Jamming Tower is sometimes getting thrown in. Chen Pao's still good, I just think the Japanese players weren't willing to adapt for the Dragapult matchup, causing poor results. Instead of just running the 70 hit point Frigibax and Bidoof, they were still going with the 60 hit point versions, which is asking for trouble. If the Dragapult player goes first and gets a turn 2 Dragapult, you basically have to have 3 Frigibax down turn 1 to survive that and they can just bring up your leftover Frigibax the turn after. Yes, I know the higher HP ones suck in comparison, but if the alternative is losing the game, what choice do you have? Still, if I'm going based on Japanese lists, this is what you'll want to play. 260 hit point Frigibax, 170 hit point Frigibax, and a 1-1 split of Bidoof appears to be the way to go. And because Dragapult can wreak so much havoc, a 1-1 line of Palkia has snuck in there, just like I had to sneak into my first foot convention as a teenager. There isn't a single new card 100% worth adding, so yeah, Chen Pao next format is basically Chen Pao this format, except now it struggles against the new BDIF. Similarly, Dialga V-Star Matang doesn't have any new cards worth adding next format. The only change you'll want to make is swapping out the 60 hit point Belladum for the 70 hit point one. Do that and your Dialga deck is ready for Twilight Masquerade. For the final good old deck, we have Roaring Moon Ancient Box Box. The, uh, the second box is a secret. Literally. For going the EX entirely, this single prize list is very similar to what you've been playing for the last few months, with a couple of notable buffs, Secret Box and Kirin. Secret Box will have to replace Prime Catcher as your A spec, but the power is just too good to pass up. By discarding 3 cards from your hand, Secret Box allows you to go and get an item, tool, supporter, and stadium. 
So Citra Box can grab you an Earthen Vessel, Ancient Booster, Professor Sada, and Pokestop, all of which help to fill up your discard pile quickly. And Kieran is a 30 damage boost, helping Roaring Moon potentially take a one-shot KO against big Stage 2 Pokemon at the end of the game. The only other new card here is Enhanced Hammer. It's useful at bumping Ludia's Legacy Energy while also slowing down a Dragapult deck running Neo Upper Energy. Speaking of Dragapult, Phantom Dive will take a KO every turn, and the pings can eventually eat away at someone on your bench. So you may want to include a copy of Penny or some Switch Carts to prevent this. Otherwise, you're just relying on Ancient Booster and Cunning to not let them take extra prizes. As soon as Unfair Stamp was announced, people began dreaming of a world where you stamp your opponent to two, then Arbok DX them to nothing, then Darkrai the A-Spec back into your hand and do it all over again. Well, either the combo sucks, or players in Japan just haven't been brave enough to actually play it because it's done nothing. But that doesn't mean YouTubers looking for fresh ideas won't open their mouths as wide as possible when making the thumbnail for this deck. Still, if our boxy X is ever going to do anything, now is the time. The list here is how you'd currently play Arbok EX, except I swapped the Prime Catcher for Unfair Stamp. That's, that's it. You get energy into the discard pile with Radiant Greninja, Dark Patch it onto an Ekans, then evolve into Arbok EX, forcing them to discard two cards from hand. If you've Unfair Stamped, then they have zero cards left after you attack. Should be a perfect combo, right? Well, the three energy attack cost on Arbok is a bit high, leading to potential missed attacks. But come on, Darkrai V-Star lets you stamp twice, how can this be bad? And those are how the old decks are looking come Twilight Masquerade on Wednesday, with deck lists in the description for easy importing into PDCGL. Toyn Lei helped clean up this handy cheat sheet for the new format, showing win rate data for each matchup from the recent Champions League tournament, which saw more than 2,700 players. Basically, Dragapult is good against everything except Maridon and Blissey. Unsurprisingly, Ludia V-Star hates seeing Maridon, while Blissey kind of hates everything not named Dragapult. Which old decks will you be updating for Twilight Master Raid? Let everyone know in the comments.